Welcome back to our series on following Portugal's national route N2 in a large motorhome. Touring the N2 in a large motorhome can present some challenges, but if you follow the series, the tour will be easy for you. We have created a general guide to touring the N2 in a separate short video. If you have not seen it yet, click on the link at the end of this video. There is something for everyone on this route, and we will show you some of the highlights for us. Let us know what we missed and you found in the comments. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel. It will cost you nothing, but will help to grow our channel. We will provide a QR code later to help you subscribe. In this edition, we take you from Penacova to Pedregallo Grande. I must apologise that in the last episode, I said we would take you to the centre of Portugal. But it turns out we had so much to show you that we'll have to do that in the next episode. Also, I forgot to include two spa towns where we only got our passport stamps. These were Castro Dia and São Pedro do Sul. You may remember that we left the windmills to drop down into Penacova. Here we stayed at the Parque de Campismo de Penacova, which is not the most picturesque of sites, but its location is perfect. And at 22.50 a night, it fit the bill. You can find it on Search for Sites. The toilet and shower facilities had seen their day, but they were clean and they were functional. Laundry facilities were available at five and a half euros a time, but it was not exactly the fastest washing machine we've ever seen. The site is situated on the banks of the Mondigo River, just 100 metres from Praia de Reconquinho, which is a blue flag beach and recognised as one of the best river beaches in Portugal. The boat you see here is a Barca Serrana, and you can take a trip on this boat for 18 euros which includes a wine and local produce tasting. But you must book this at least 24 hours beforehand. Another 500 metres down the river, you can hire kayaks and paddle boards. The beach area is very pleasant, with free parasols available for shade and lifeguards on duty every day from May to October. A safe area has been marked out for children to bathe and a bridge from which you are allowed to jump into the crystal clear waters. In mid-September the water temperature was actually quite pleasant. If you cross the bridge it brings you to the Penacova side of the gorge which sits 80 metres above on the cliff side. There is a winding path up the cliff side which is quite strenuous, but it is doable with stops to admire the scenery as you climb. And you are rewarded with magnificent views from the pagoda at the Miradoro Penacova. We stayed in Penacova for two nights, for two reasons. One was that it was the weekend and there was lots of motorbikes out on the road, and the second was that temperatures were going to be 37 degrees both days so we needed somewhere where we could cool off in the river. The views are as breathtaking as the climb of the cliffside. In the distance, you can see what remains of an old river crossing, which is thought to have been used by Roman centurions as they marched into battle. The vantage point gives you 270 degree views of the Medigo and Alva river valleys. Looking back up the Alva river valley and up onto the mountain sides, you could just make out the windmills standing proud on top of the hill. The square in the middle of the town has a pagoda covered in wisteria which gives commanding views over the valley. 
and it is a pleasant place to take a beverage or two. This is also where you will find tourist information in order to get your passport stamped. From here we could also see the river beach and the splendid restaurant situated just behind it. And that was a great N2 photo opportunity. Also in the square is a small but well presented church. All in all, the town is a very nice place to have a look around. The walk back down to the site was much easier than the walk up. But still, we found it necessary to bathe in these beautiful crystal clear waters. How could we resist? We love Penacova, and I'm sure you will too. Make sure you don't miss out on this little gem. Margot made an authentic paella to commemorate our visit to Penacova. It was delicious. Continuing along on the N2, we got our next passport stamp at the Central Bar at Villanova is. In the passport, this place is claimed to be the most western point of the EN2. There are more westerly towns on the passport, but this is the most westerly town on the actual N2. And of course, as is the norm in Portugal, this place was beautifully well kept. It is found at kilometre 248. Our next stop should have been Lusa, one of the Sheath villages, but to my regret we missed it because it was not on the end to itself. We still managed to get our passport stamped at Goish, which is another magical riverside stop. Goish is very popular thanks to its river's crystal clear waters, which is probably why it has been inhabited since prehistoric times. The town gained greater importance in the 16th century during the reigns of King Manuel, who granted the town charter in 1516, and King John III, who had the Ponte Real Bridge built here in 1533, a truly iconic construction. Crossing the bridge will make you want to stroll along the river, the tree canopy overhead protecting you from the heat. From there, the riverside walkway is in sight as is the bar with a floating terrace and a river beach, calling you in for a dip on warmer days. The river allowed for mills to be built to harness the power of its waters, structures that still stand on its banks to this day. Another attraction is a zip line which crosses the river. Here you can glide from one side of the river to the other, passing under the arch of the bridge and right past the fountain. Our only regret when visiting this place was that we did not wear our swimming costumes. Bar and restaurant on the riverside is reasonably priced. I had pikapau, which translates to woodpecker. It is so named because you eat it with a cocktail stick. If you are lucky, you might get a table where you can dangle your feet in the water whilst you are eating. It is free to swim in the river and to use the parasols on the island beach. We walked along the riverside and over the dam, being enticed by the cooling waters in the 37 degree heat.
for getting our swimming costumes was a real mistake. There is a municipal campsite at Goish, and in hindsight, we should have arranged to stay there for a day or two. Just look how clean and refreshing that water looks. We got our passport stamped at a small hotel just to the left of the N2 junction. After walking along the riverside, we went up into the town and got another stamp at the tourist office. Outside the tourist office is the fountain that shoots booms up in an unpredictable manner. Cargo decided to be very brave and have a game of Russian roulette with the water. I'll place an arrow at the point where she was stood so you can see how close we were to a you being framed moment. I was so willing that spout to turn on, but the gods were not listening. After leaving Goish, you travel another 46 kilometres or nearly 30 miles over the mountains with spectacular views as you travel on to Petrogeo Grande. This is another quiet clean and perfectly manicured Portuguese town. At tourist information we were met by a very nice lady who told us the type of things we could see in the village as well as the dam that we could see beyond the village. The church of Our Lady of Assumption is found in a square in the centre of the village. The interior of the church is quite something to behold with beautiful artwork everywhere. Walking back from the church towards the tourist information, you come to the House of Mathematics. This building is very unusual in the fact that it has plaques covering the whole of the walls with mathematical formulas and information about some of the great mathematicians of our time. What is very unusual about this place is the fact that there is very little information about it on the internet. If you know anything about its history or why it exists, let us know in the comments. Personally, I think it is a hell of a way of making revision notes. Another couple of kilometres along the N2 brings you to the Barragem de Cabril, which holds back the river Zazeri and forms the Cabril Reservoir for hydroelectricity production. The reservoir is best known for its beaches and water sports. Join us next time when we journey on from Serta through to the geodesical centre of Portugal and on to Abrantes and I found out exactly how lucky we were not to have been caught up in the fires. Bye for now and safe travels.